All right. Let's see if we're live. I got to wait for the thing. If the thing is going to work. Wait, hold on. I think we are live. Why can't I see the chat? Wow. Oh, hello. Are we live? Hello, guys. You got an you got an ad. How did you get an ad? What? Uh, anyways, uh, hello. Oh, oh, okay, we are live. Uh, hey, guys, what's going on? My name is Zach Aguilar. I'm the voice actor for Ether and also the Moon Carver. And today I am joined by Yoimiya's voice actor, Jenny Yokobori. Hi, that's me. It, I never get used to you doing your deep voices for as long as I know you. Every time you do it, it always catches me off guard. And I'm just like, who's that? And I'm like, oh, it's right. It's Zach. It's Zach. <laughs> Oh, I know that. It, do you know the story behind that voice? I don't actually. Oh, well, I guess I, maybe my stream does. But long story short is when I was younger, people would make fun of me on uh, on Xbox Live because I was like, hey, guys, like, I like to I'm like, let's go. Let's capture the flag. And then I started kind of like training my voice to go like to to do like a like a lower voice so people would i don't know think i was older or something and mm -hmm. not not be mean to me um and it worked and everyone was nice to me then i, I just <laughs> I, I would just talk like this like hey guys how's it going how's it going guys and everyone was super nice i'm like what is this this is messed up but that was xbox <laughs> live back in the old days so um, that was the wild west it really was yeah no that was that was nuts um it's super cool to have you on here jenny by the way thank you so much for doing this um, I'm super happy to be here. I'm excited. Yeah, no, me too. I can't wait to get your Mia. I, I mean, on these videos, usually it's titled hopefully, but mm -hmm. I think we're going to get her. I don't have a, I mean, I have a decent amount of, of gems, but you have a good amount of gems. Yeah. I hope we'll win the 50 50. And if not, um, rest in peace, my bank account, like usual, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, cause like I've been ha I've been able to give people some pretty good luck with pulling her, cause like yeah, it's like I don't know if it's some like Genshin superstition, but like I was able to give people enough luck to pull Yoimiya, but I was it was hard for me to pull Yoimiya, cause I think I used my luck up on everyone else. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. When uh, me and Lily were pulling live, and she pulled for uh, she got Yoimiya and Sayu within like the first and second. Uh, 10 pull that she what? did I was just sort of like sitting there i'm like come on you're just like all right guys thanks for coming we'll see you <laughs> yeah lily has lily had crazy luck and it was funny because like right beforehand christian was like giving her a hard time and was like yeah so i hear that you have like really good luck with stuff and she was like oh i, I don't really know about that like that uh... <laughs> nice and then like Within like the first ten pulls she did, she got Sayu, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me, Lily? I don't want to hear about any of this sweet humbleness anymore. That was luck. That was amazing." Yeah. Oh no. Oh, and that that just reminds me. Um, would you please tell the viewers like some of the other roles and stuff you've done? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. So in addition to Yoimiya, um, I am Kumiko on The Simpsons. I play Jade and Ainsley in Rainbow High. I played Pupil in Akudama Drive. Um, I play Karomi in Cinema Roll in Hello Kitty and Friends, Super Cute Adventure. Um, one of the chops that not a lot of people know that I do is I am the Netflix English voice for Dashi and the Octonauts. And so if you watch any of the movies that were kind of like produced by Netflix, I am the English voice of Dashi in there. So those are fun. Um, I've been in Central Park and that's all my brain is going to let me think of right now. I was in <laughs> uh, Pokemon, an episode of Pokemon Journeys as Horus, which is cool because I got to work with Xeno. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. The, yeah, those are a couple, couple of my roles. <laughs> everyone's freaking out they're like you are a freaking icon i see that in the chat <laughs> that's super cool no, i'm just some nerd <laughs> aren't we all <laughs> <laughs> well i'm probably i'm the biggest one out of everyone 
<laughs> I'm just like, I will fight hey, you guys. on that Aguilar. <laughs> hey guys, I really like, uh, you know, Naruto and a bunch of other stuff. And <laughs> it's like, you know, this really obscure one you probably never heard of. It's called Naruto. Nar I know I'm just a freak yeah. for liking it. <laughs> It's so random. It's really indie. You've probably never heard of it. It's called Dragon Ball Z. I'm oh, such a geek. Don't you love that? I love it when people tell me. I mean, I get like why Dragon Ball is the nostalgic anime and stuff, but when they're like, oh yeah, what's your favorite anime? I'm like, oh yeah, Dragon Ball. Really like Dragon Ball. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> you really like anime. Um I think it was it was tough because for me, somebody asked me what my favorite anime was and I, I think it That's comes back to... That's such a scary question. It's so, it's so hard because, it's like... It's so intimidating. Naruto was, like, the one... Like, what kind of introduced me, I feel like, to anime and really got me into it. But if I think about my favorite anime, it's probably Shigatsu Akimi no Uso, uh, Your Lie in April, uh, about playing... Mm, yeah. Just playing piano and stuff because I am a pianist. I played piano for, like, 10 years, so... I didn't uh, know that about you. Yeah, so whoa. like the recitals and all of that, and them dramatically sweating and being like, "Whoa, I can't believe, uh, I can't believe he hit that note the way he did, and how he took a rest there, and he didn't completely follow the score, but the judges still gave him a a, a perfect uh, a perfect score. How did he do that?" And, and then <laughs> like the sweat drips off him, and he's like, "Gotta breathe. Whew. All right, I'm going in. Okay, walk up." <laughs> and the sweat is like dripping off you because you're wearing like you know nice clothes and stuff and there's a no air conditioning suit, yeah. in there and the lights are beaming on the stage and you're like Doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah <laughs> i had no idea you were a pianist this is new information to me yeah 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 whenever anyone asks me what my favorite anime is like my heart starts raising i get like ptsd flashbacks to, like middle school where like the mean boys would ask me what my favorite anime was don't. and i'd be like it's this and they'd be like wrong and i'm like wrong. don't say the wrong answer <laughs> exactly i'm like oh, are you gonna bully me that's so funny i feel like for me in middle school people they would ask me they, I don't think they would even ask me if I would like anime. If I was talking about an anime, they'd just call me a nerd. And no, it was like so scary because like I was, I, yeah, like of course, when, yeah, when we were kind of growing up, it was a lot less mainstream than it was, than it is now. Um, and so I was like part of like the nerdy group, but even like the other nerds would bully me. It was brutal. We're like, especially like, because I'd be. They'd be like, oh yeah, you're you're like you're a nerd, you're a geek, uh, prove it. What is your favorite anime? I'm like, I like Oran High School High School, but they're like, oh, you're not a real geek. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> what did they yeah, what did was, they want you to like? like it was like it was the wrong answer. Like it was because I didn't say like One Piece or Dragon Ball or like like Berserk or like something edgier. It was because I liked Oran. And then I was like, I was wrong. Oh, but Oran's good though. To be like, okay. I know. It slaps. It still slaps. And then I was like, uh, I like Death Note too. And they're like, that's a little better. <laughs> <laughs> like, screw you guys. I I am on like episode 150 of One Piece. And um, one day I might finish it. But uh, <laughs> that day will not that's be anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> that show's gonna outlive us all it really is. yeah no seriously i would love to i wonder that that'll be the stream that i do i'll do a huge charity stream and i'll be like okay guys i'm not allowed to share me watching the episodes of one piece because of like the dmca <laughs> or whatever but yeah i'm like the dmca is gonna show up directly into your house they're not even gonna copy strike you they're just gonna start like pounding on your door they're like you gotta stop <laughs> but i will sit here stop and i will it. i will put a tiny mirror in like tiny mirror behind me or something so you can see for a fact that i am watching the show and i'm just gonna sit here for like a year and watch every episode it sounds like some terrifying performance <laughs> art piece that that'll be the next big um i don't know what they call it uh, the, like the marathon the, the twitch streams yeah, call it like, like the subathon or something like that Shia LaBeouf did that one time where like he like live streamed himself watching all of his movies back to back to back <laughs> and that's gonna be you but with one piece and just sitting there with the with like bloodshot eyes like staring at the screen watching all of his movies like oh yeah these were all great <laughs> uh -huh. oh 
just, that's, that's awesome. And just like sometimes, like you just, I just like the idea that you're like completely silent most of the time, and sometimes you just like nod and so, like like once every like five hours, you're like, <laughs> Chopper's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just kind of like giggle, and you're like, <laughs> super. <laughs> right, right. Just watch, it, just go through the entire thing, and you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's wearing a hat. <laughs> Straw. Oh, that's why they call them straw hats. Oh, straw hat. You're like a few hundred episodes in, and you finally <laughs> realize, oh, straw hat. Oh. Because Luffy wears a straw hat. Who would have known? Oh. There's so many, so many good shows. Oh, and before I forget, Jenny, I gotta ask because I saw it on Twitter, and we talked about this like just before the stream started, but I saw that you were a pyrotechnician and like and with yoimiya like how did that how is that a thing like where how did you get started with that like that's so crazy it, it was actually my first job ever in los angeles because i moved out here for uh school a very my very short-lived college career and which i was studying acting and then uh college didn't work out for me for some uh reasons that I won't go into right now, but um, I was straight out of college and I was like, I need a job. And so I applied everywhere. And I this is before I ever got like even an acting gig. I think this was before I even like landed any acting gig out in L.A. I was a pyrotechnician first because I applied everywhere. And the job that called me back was this pyrotechnician. I, I got started at Universal Studios. I was just really trying to make my way. I was just like this 19 year old kid who was looking for work. And I applied at like Jamba Juice and all these restaurants for like hostess positions and waitressing. And I applied at like Barnes and Noble and I couldn't get an interview to save my life. And then finally, one night on a whim, I applied to Universal Studios Hollywood. And they called me in like the very next day and they were like, okay, so there's a uh, two options you can either work as stage crew where you would uh work with pyrotechnics and explosives or you would or you can be a parking lot attendant and i'm like cool i'll go with stage crew <laughs> and so i was like this 19 year old kid brand new to la i didn't know pretty much anyone in the city came out here to act and suddenly i was working with explosives <laughs> and and so I was like climbing. Yeah. So I worked with explosives. I learned how to work like, uh, like fire safety and. Oh, studios Hollywood, but there's the water world show there. And that was where I learned how to work with pyrotechnics is that I would be crawling on this giant metal, like what felt like a death trap, this giant rust. Oh my God degree 100 degree heat carrying like a bag of explosives and uh fun fact is that when you work with explosives and fire and stuff like that you have to wear 100 percent cotton clothing because if it burns it will just burn whereas it's into your skin oh sorry jenny you're cutting off just a little bit you said <sighs> it'll burn into what if you don't wear the It'll clothing like yeah, so cotton is, it's like, you know, kind of like a natural material. And so it, what, we have to wear 100% cotton because then um, the fabric itself will just burn. But if you're wearing anything with polyester or anything and it burns, then it will like melt instead. And oh. so it will like, yeah, so it could like melt into you. So when you're working with pyrotechnics, you have to wear 100% cotton. Wow. Because otherwise it's like super dangerous. And so I was wearing 100% cotton, crawling over this giant rusted metal set installing fireworks and stripping fireworks and just yeah that was my life and then from He's... oh hello oh hello yeah hello okay there we go and then from there i uh got a job at the hollywood bowl and i started doing fireworks there too wow and that was like the big fireworks, like Universal. It was mostly like uh, smaller, uh, smaller grade stuff. Like it was mostly just like uh, nothing like really big. It was kind of like uh, sparks and like laser shots and things like that. And so like some flares. But at uh, the Hollywood Bowl, that was like the big uh, like concussion shells that you'd see like at Disneyland, like the big, like almost like 
cannonball looking things that you load into these pipes and they shoot into the sky and they make like the huge fireworks. Wow, that's crazy. I just, I don't know. I can't believe you, but you were just, you were just down to do it. You're like, okay, well, I'll give this a shot. Like, yeah, it was, um, so it's actually kind of like a weird story because when I was a kid, I was just really, really nervous and I was scared of everything. And then at some point in my life, I just got sick of being scared. And so I w just decided to like, I don't know, I wanted to live a life that's worth remembering. And so that's so I just relatable. Started... <laughs> yeah, so so I just was like sick of being scared. And I just decided that I want to start living a life that was like that I would I'd be able to like look back on and be able to be like, yeah, I did that. And so I was terrified when they asked me if I was okay with working in pyrotechnics because I, I had like I had never like I was the person growing up that I never even did like fireworks on the 4th of July. Like I was just sort of like, no, I'll blow my hand off. Absolutely not. And, but when they asked me that question, something was just sort of like, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it. And then I ended up loving it. And I was like, it's just a lot about um, less of being scared of it and more about like knowing the, the dangers of it and respecting it and no being smart about it. Right, right. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was just me being sick of being scared and like wanting to, live more of my life um but yeah i learned so much at those jobs and i'm really really glad that i did it too um actually it was funny uh before i ever even considered voice acting as a career i was actually studying to be a pyro uh like an actual like licensed uh pyrotechnic person i forget what the actual term is because oh, it's been wow. years and head empty only voiceover now <laughs> but yeah, I was studying. I was studying to get my license so that I could actually uh, do work in a commercial scale and eventually work my way up to like designing fireworks shows. Wow, that's su I, I I'm just still blown away at how how this is a thing. Like, why is it that the majority of people have so many things related to their actual Genshin character? <laughs> but that's I super swear, cool. Like, um, it's like it was made. Like it was meant to be. Like, it was, like, you know, we have that item in the game called Intertwined Fate, and that's how I feel like this entire game is. Like, it, like characters really do choose us. Like, yeah. we don't choose the characters. Like, there's some weird force in Genshin Impact that's like, no, like, we have Intertwined Fate with them. Like, I, it's not up to us, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's spooky ooky ooky. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because even, uh, even with... Um with sarah sarah miller crew she actually has a real life twin i, found, I know that's I, nuts i didn't know that until i thought she was joking around with me i'm like wait like you're serious you actually have a, mm -hmm. have a twin i mean for me i'm an only child so <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but maybe i have a uh, a long lost sister out there Somewhere. Maybe you have like a whole like sister sister thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's maybe you're gonna like be in a mall someday and you're gonna be changing clothes almost and you're gonna look up and you're gonna be like, oh that's a cool mirror, but it's really your twin. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> and that's the plot of the pilot episode of Sister Sister, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> yeah, it's so that is so cool though. Wow, and so um I guess what kind of made you want to pursue voiceover? Just I going mean, from that acting... and then voiceover, like how did how did that you know? I mean, because you come to LA, I'm I'm assuming that's why you you know you came to LA to pursue acting, right? So it was, yeah. yeah. So acting was always like, <laughs> it's funny. Like I've lived my life, and because I've been acting since I was eight years old, like nothing in like professional realm, just like uh, doing auditions here and there, doing like school plays and whatnot. Um. But that was always really like the dream. That's always what I wanted to do. But I grew up in a family where like everyone had like very like practical jobs. Like my mom's a social worker. My dad was a businessman. My sisters like have like my sister worked at like Goldman Sachs for a while or something. Like they are all like very businessy people. Yeah. And so I was like, no one in my family ever told me that like, no, you can't be an actor. I sort of like told it to myself. Where I was like, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't be an actor. That's not practical. That's not, I need to have like an actual real life adult job. Like there's no way, like there's so few people who get to make it as an actor. There's no way that I can do that. So I would just like refuse that thought in my head. I would always do it because it was the thing that I loved the most. And it was like the thing that made me really happy. And I was like my passion and everything. 
but in my head, I was always just sort of like, no, 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 there's, there's, there's no way. I can't allow myself that thought. And so even though I was like pursuing it in high school, like I went to performing arts school and I was studying it during my short time at college, it was still like outside of the realm of possibility in my head. And so I was trying to do anything other than acting for a while. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was studying to be, I was studying for my pyrotechnics license. I was uh, thinking about going back to school so I could design theme park attractions. I was doing working as um, a manager at themed entertainment things. I was doing anything except for that. And eventually I realized that I was just inherently really, really unhappy. Yeah. It just occurred to me, I'm like, I really miss acting. Like, I don't feel like a whole person anymore because I'm acting. Like, I feel like I... Oh, I think Jenny's cutting off for us, guys. Uh, oh, are we... Uh-oh. Wait. Uh-oh. No. She was just getting in into the good stuff. Uh oh. Hello? Hello? Are we back? Yeah, there we go. There we I know go. you were just like getting into it, just about like not being happy and then we yeah. lost you. Yeah. And then my and then my internet connection wasn't happy. <laughs> no, is it is it it's not it's the back. spectrum? I think it's, I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know spectrum is like the the nightmare up there. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I was just inherently unhappy. So I started being like, okay, you know what? Maybe like I should give this another shot. And so I was taking like lots of classes. Yeah. Like I was studying at the groundlings and I was doing a lot of on camera stuff. And I was doing like the occasional like modeling gig here and there. And I was still really unhappy and I didn't understand why. Cause I was like, no, I'm doing the thing. Like, how come I like I just am not still still not happy. And then um, I was working as a tour guide at Universal Studios, which is another part of my weird resume. And uh, Bob Bergen, the voice of Porky Pig, uh, came in to teach a free workshop. And they were like, oh yeah, there's still spots available in case anyone wants to do it. And I was like, taking a voice acting workshop with the voice of Porky Pig, like, it's free? Hell yeah, I'm going to do that. That sounds like a once wow. in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to jump at that. And that so, is. His wait list is insane. Like, I know. That's crazy, of course. <laughs> And so I jumped at the chance and I took a one night workshop with Bob and I was just sort of like, I felt like this like change in me. And I was like, this is something that like, man, this is like a job that people do. This is like an actual career. And I was like, huh, huh. And sort of like, it took me a few months, but eventually I remember so clearly because I worked for a little while at Disneyland too, uh, doing like truck driving and construction and like, set building things like that like very like sweaty backbreaking work wow. and i was sitting in the back of our work van one night just kind of like thinking to myself trying to like figure out what was missing from my life and like what would make me happy and all of a sudden it felt like a bolt of lightning hit me out of nowhere and it was just like this truth got like unlocked inside of me as cheesy as it sounds where it's like voice acting voice acting is what you're supposed to do you dumb dumb girl <laughs> it should not have taken you this long to figure this out, you fool. Because I had also, like, in my very brief time in college, I did some voice acting, too, because there was a really great animation program. And whenever I did that, I was just overjoyed and having so much fun. And it was like a day of just pure play. But again, it was just like that voice inside me that's like, no, you can't. This isn't a career that you can do. This isn't a job. You can't. You can't. And then finally, like, one night, everything just clicked together at once. And it was like, no, this is what you're meant to do. This is what you're supposed to do. And after that moment, I just threw everything I had into voice acting. Like I started working as many shifts as I could at my different survival jobs so I could make enough money to go to workshops. And I bought like every book I could. And I started doing private coachings and just, I started studying like crazy. Wow. And it was just, I would like be <laughs> torturing myself because I would work like a 16 hour shift that would get extended to like an 18 hour shift at and I'd be like dragging my feet and then I would like drive myself two hours from Anaheim to Burbank so I could go to like a three hour workshop in Studio City. Wow. Running on no sleep, but I knew that like this, it was just like this thing where like I knew that this was what I was supposed to do. And so 
no matter how tired I was, even though like it was definitely not good for my health, and I don't recommend anyone else do that. Do not <laughs> live by my example. Please take care of your health. That's it's just like it was something inside me that's like, no, this is what I have to do. I would do, yeah, it was just like anything because once I figured it out, it was just like, yeah, there, I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> that's just so inspiring, though, and I think a lot of people watching can respect that. I, I get a lot of questions, I'm sure you do too just about voiceover and how people can get into it and um and i try to tell people like there's a bunch of different things you can do there's a lot of different paths you can take but i mean really like the dedication you've shown to to make your dream happen i feel like everybody needs that somewhat you know what i mean like it is true there is luck involved some people get super super lucky some people will audition for their first gig and get it like right away and they might not even have like any formal training and everything like everyone has a different path but to just make your dream happen to have that fire underneath you to keep doing that no matter how tired you are no matter you know what i mean like you have to have that and that's something that um I don't know if everyone it, understand everyone watching kind of understands like it's like there's so many like uh show business cliches that i think would keep me going even on the days where like i was dead tired because i knew that this was what i was i had to do but it was like 90 percent of the job is showing up uh like nine ninety percent in perspiration 10 percent inspiration and then like just uh and then succeeding in acting is honestly just wanting it more than other people like all of those i think are very very true um because yeah it's just showing up it's like you have to show up to everything like you have to show up mentally you have to be there because like yeah a luck luck plays a luck plays a big part in it sure but also it's like you're not gonna get like the luck's not going to find you like you have to go out and make your own luck it's like Right, someone's <laughs> not gonna knock on your door and be like, "Hey, you want to play the main character in this like video game or this show?" Like, yeah, it's like <laughs> no, you have to keep <laughs> you have to keep showing up. You have to keep showing up to like stuff again and again and again and keep working at it. And then eventually, I think luck just got sick of me, and it's just sort of like, "Fine, we'll throw you a bone." Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you gotta be you gotta be in their face. You have to be willing to to yeah like just do all that stuff <laughs> do all this stuff and do things i mean for me i don't know about you like i am very much very much introverted but i made it a thing i, oh, I made absolutely. it i made it a thing to to somewhat change myself at least when i when i flip that switch in my head to when i walk into a studio like yes i'm gonna go say hi to these people yes i'm gonna do this do i feel super weird right now I feel extremely uncomfortable like I don't want to go and talk to people or introduce myself to people but if I feel like there is a reason for me to do so like somebody casts me in a in a thing and their office is right around the corner in the studio I'm in I'm gonna go try to say hi and like thank them in person and even if yeah, I just like keep it brief I'm not gonna make it super weird or anything but I know that that's something I need to do and push myself to do. It sounds so simple to other people, but if you're introverted, you know what I mean. Like, oh this yeah, no, same. Like, like the most when stressful I was thing getting ever. started, I am. I was like, I'm very much like an indoor cat, like an introvert, and so people like say that I'm wrong all the time, and I'm like, no, 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 because you're seeing the like the act that I put on, the outside Jenny, essentially, like the person that I've become, so I can like do good in this field because like this is what I'm supposed to do, and I know that I, you have to like put yourself out there if you want to be an actor yeah but like it's it's come from like years and years of like conditioning and practicing it because yeah you have to like if you're not an extrovert you have to at least pretend that you are sometimes definitely definitely and that's people i remember when i went to the um uh we we did that little that little picnic and and whatnot and i remember i went there and everyone was like oh that's so weird i i I imagined you being like more extroverted and stuff because you're so like I don't know wild and whatnot on on the streams and online I'm like yeah well I mean you know I'm I'm doing that not only like I, don't, I want everyone to feel comfortable you know because it's it's online right it's it's different than being in person but I'm like no this mm -hmm. is just this is just me like I'm just really kind of like whatever it's <laughs> yeah it's it's part of the job it's like um this is sort of like a more serious topic, but it sort of is uh, to speak on something a little bit kind of serious. Like that's sort of like one of the dangers of the internet is because you watch uh, content creators and things like that and you feel like you know these people, but 
uh, we all have to put on kind of like a brave face most time because I know that a lot of content creators and actors were actually very introverted people. Totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and that's the thing too, even working with, uh, even working with directors and stuff, I'm sure you've noticed it as well when you work with someone, uh, someone that you really trust or someone that you know kind of can relate to you in what way. I feel like I can give a better performance just because it's more, it's more intimate. Like I just, I trust them. I don't, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's, it's like I relate to them more and I don't have to, uh, I don't have to put on like a, a brave face and I can just kind of be yeah. myself. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing the character, right? And I'm like, yeah, I do all this. And I'm like, okay, so what do you guys think I should do? <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like I go back into myself. So, so much of acting is being vulnerable and being able to live outside of your comfort zone. And so, but in those moments where you kind of like can't exist within your comfort zone and still do the thing, it's like so much better. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Or it's like if you're with a director who's like a really good friend of yours and like you're able to just sort of like relax and just sort of be like, okay, I can screw up a little bit and we can like find the character together. It doesn't have to be like an immediate thing where like I blow them away the first page. <laughs> like there's no pressure where it's like. But there are, there uh... are people like that though. There are people, there are directors like that out there, which where if you don't do like amazing on every single take for whatever reason, they will judge you. And some people have crazy ideals for first impressions mm -hmm. like they want you to be unbelievable for a first impression which doesn't make any sense but then if they know somebody else in the industry and they're buddy buddy with them they can just walk in oh hey how you doing they the person just messes up like way more than you do and they might even be a oh, seasoned yeah. veteran but they're gonna judge you way more than they're gonna judge mm -hmm, that person mm -hmm. that's already their friend it's it's a tough industry, it's, guys. Like it's a tough gig, yeah. Like, uh, like when people ask me for advice to get into acting, I'm like, you gotta have really tough skin, and you gotta like push yourself like miles outside of your comfort zone. It's not just like taking a step out of your comfort zone. It's like no, you gotta push yourself. Yeah. Because I really do think that like it's that old cliche. It's like people who succeed in acting are people who just want it more. It is honestly, there's some truth to it because it's like luck plays a plays a big role in it but at the same time like if you start succeeding and you realize that you really don't want it and you're just sort of like you could become like complacent and you're like oh man uh maybe i won't i'll take a step back it's like then people are going to start advancing ahead of you because people are like it's just the hunger that drives you sometimes right right everybody i think that's what pushed it for me I, everybody wants it bad enough at some point and then, I mean, I just kept doing my own thing. And then I got a phone call one day that it's like, oh, yeah, like, you're going to come in and do some additional voices. And that's really what got the snow, the, the big snowball rolling. But I, I think I can recognize to it, it, even once you get your foot in the door like that, you need to be the one that continues to make you. You're the one pushing that. It, it's kind of like, how do I explain this? It's like a snowball. Uh you know, as it grows and grows and grows with more snow, it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. Except mm -hmm. the only difference is, is that this, this ball isn't rolling downhill. It's rolling uphill and you are the yeah, one pushing exactly. it. You are the one pushing it. It's not just gonna, it's not like you get your foot in the door and everything's just going to happen for you. Like you have to keep pushing it up to make it happen. <laughs> so. And that's the thing that's like so scary with um our job too, is that it's then it kind of like becomes this kind of, unhealthy relationship with a lot of actors where we realize how much of a grind it is and then we kind of like get scared to stop grinding and let ourselves be human beings sometimes totally totally because we just we want to keep pushing because we know how much of a push it is and we have to keep pushing and then we like forget that we're human beings and all of a sudden we get sick and we're like oh i i can take a rest sometimes yeah it's hard it, i think it's really tough to do a job that you love because i've pushed myself too to un definitely unhealthy times mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i really want to do this i don't want to lose this job i love working on the character and then i realized i just like i just did like eight or nine hours of of sessions i can hardly talk and i'm gonna do the whole i'm gonna keep doing that um mm -hmm. every week but it's also it's a weird thing too it's like a blessing and also a curse because you're blessed to have the work and you're blessed to be making money doing this but you're also uh <laughs> kind of curse that <laughs> you know what i mean it's oh, like a double absolutely. it's a double-edged sword i think that's mm -hmm. that's for sure and so yeah like my advice if you want to get into voice acting know that it's like i mean it's to 
to me and I'm sure to you too, it's like, it's the best job in the world, but just know what you're signing up for that. It is still like a dream job is still a job. Definitely, definitely. And if you treat it like a job, I think you will have more, you will have more chance of success. But then when it gets to the point where you are working so much where you're like, wow, this is like, a nine to five job like you are working that much and and even beyond that i mean nine to five does not does not count the hours that you could do 24 hours a day working on this job i think mm -hmm. if you're doing your own scheduling you're doing auditions you're doing voiceover stuff all day um and then and then even after that you're taking classes too you're always trying to improve yourself every actor always mm -hmm. tries to improve themselves throughout the entirety of their careers so just trying to fit all of this stuff and then you have other things you have of course conventions you go to and you i mean there's there's a lot of things that kind of come with this job that are cool um but yeah i i don't know i hope for everybody watching right now i hope to eventually kind of show you guys what some stuff is like behind the scenes whether that's at cons or even in a studio get permission from people because mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting for everyone to realize how it works. It's not like we just go in and we goof around. It's like I look at my schedule every day and I'm like... <gasps> <laughs> Going in and goofing around is like 5% of our job. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes you get to do those really, really fun lines and they're just like, oh yeah, just do whatever. Like you're singing a song. I'm like, well, what song am I singing? I don't know. You make it up. Okay, well, yeah. I'll do something. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what makes our job so worth it is for those moments where it's just like it's like that's you always because i mean yeah I, we've both been doing this for years and there's still those moments where you'll just be like i can't believe they pay me to do this yeah like, this is oh, so much fun but then for like those moments there's like a million other moments where you're like i'm so tired please just let me sleep i <laughs> want to sleep so bad <laughs> please i just want to sleep and then you're like oh but i got this amazing audition that i still have to power exactly. th power through <laughs> Oh, I had that I had that moment like a week ago where I was so tired. I was like hadn't slept in so long and I was like feeling so weak and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. I'm just gonna even with auditions, like I just moved, I'm exhausted, my body is like screaming at me that I need to rest. Yeah. I'm gonna just like maybe take a few like twenty four hours to just turn off and then right at that moment I got sent an audition for like a dream job and I'm like <laughs> nah! And then you gotta, no. then you gotta flip the switch and turn it all back yeah. on again. You can't, right, right, because it takes like, that brain too. It takes that mm -hmm. specific kind of energy out of your, just out of your mental. Especially if you're, if you're an introvert like that. Like you have to really fire your synapses in a certain way or something oh, to, yeah. to really make sure you can do. You're doing the absolute best, and and you're also drawing the creativity out. And it's a, it's a lot, but um, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I guess I and I know people joke about it. Um, what's what's that site called? Like um, how to be a voice actor dot com or I want to be a voice actor dot com. I want to be a voice actor dot com. Yeah. yeah, from from and I I've, I've seen a lot of people meme about it, too, on Twitter. And it doesn't and I don't know. It doesn't make me super happy to see people like memeing on that site because I remember reading it and I'm like, wow, all of this is just so like these are just this is just the cold, hard truth. Like nothing mm -hmm. is sugar coated. And I feel like. That's how it needs to be for people. No, that, absolutely. Like, who, I think that site's invaluable. This. I can't believe that site is free. Yeah, I see people. I've seen people meme on it like, oh, are you going to recommend them to this site again? I'm like, if you yeah. really want to do this, read the information in this site. Like, I'm not joking. Read it. It's I wish that I knew about this site when I was starting because I didn't. And this would have just shed so much light I've, I've asked so many questions i probably throughout the course of my career i've probably asked like thousands of questions to people about industry related things like how do i do this what should i do this if i'm in this weird position with like my agency or something like uh, just all these in-depth questions and that site really kind of like lays it out for you like this is what you need to do to get started and this is what you need to be prepared for it's not like you're gonna like audition for something and just hit it big and live the good yeah. life. For me, it's like, I feel like there's some kind of like disconnect in people's brains when it comes to voice acting and like entertainment jobs where they think like, oh, it's acting. So it's just like playing all the time. It's like, no, it's like, you've got to really, really study it. It's like any other job. I mean, like you wouldn't go into like any other career and not read all the literature. Like you wouldn't go to be a lawyer and not read it like a 
like a law textbook and expect to be able to be a great lawyer. It's like, no, like reading is part of it, like reading other people's experience and learning from their experiences and like learning in every possible facet that you can about what you want to do. Like that's what's going to make you successful. Because like, if you really want this, you're willing to put in even the not glamorous work. It's not just going to classes and stuff. It's also like sitting down and educating yourself on like how to do your finances and like, what do you do if you're like with invoices and things like that? There's, there's a lot to it. There's so much, <laughs> there's so to, much it. just to be real with you guys. It's not, I mean, I know I'm kind of, usually I just kind of gloss over it and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can do this, you can do that. Well, I mean, it's just really in depth. I, I give people like the general answers probably because that's what you can do is just take acting classes to get started. But, um, yeah, it's nuts. Anyways, do you want to pull for you anyway, and Mia too? Yeah, after yeah. that really in depth talk it's, about the industry it's and so educating great, people. Though. It's so great to talk about it because you have no idea how many messages I how many messages I get about it, and it's it's good to touch on. Um, there's a lot that a lot that goes into it, and please get me Yoi Mia. I think I have the fifty. I think I already got the fifty. I do I. That'd be hilarious. I hope so. I'm going to go off of your vocal reactions because I think watching your stream like makes my computer sad. And oh so, no! Okay. And okay. So I'm just gonna have to like explain oh. in vivid detail. <laughs> okay, so I got Sayu on my first poll. <gasps> okay. All right. All right. All right. That is a win. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome home, I love Lily. Her. She's such a good girl. I love Sayu. I love the way that she rolls. <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, Sayu is a perfect, like, perfect being. I'll have to Lil go through and listen to all of her voice lines and stuff. I'm so, I'm so Lily happy for Lily. Lily knocked it out of the park. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lily's been working hard at this for so many years. She's another person that's just fabulous. Like, she realizes, like, she just works really, really hard at it. Yeah. she. I mean, she's been taking classes for forever. So, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I remember, like, year, like two years ago, um, two when did i meet her was it two or three years ago it's been covid has my brain yeah, messed yeah. Up. Mm -hmm. but yeah no i'm super i'm super happy like Me people too. don't understand she's... you gotta take yeah, the classes she's... and you gotta like she's put in the work so it really is like it's that old kind of like cliche it's like success is like an iceberg like you see the top of it and you think you get it but like there's so much else like that you don't see like people are like oh lily got it because she's an influencer i'm like no it's because she works her butt off for it <laughs> And she's also fabulous. Like she, like she crushed it as Sayu. Totally, totally. I can't wait to hear her lines. I've only heard like the stuff from the trailer and and whatnot. So she sounds so good. She's uh, it's adorable. It's just like all of her voice lines just melt my heart. They they came out so well. That's awesome. Pull for explosion, girl. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm still going. This is like my thirty, if I think thirty pulls now. Yoi Mia, come home! Please. And I guess while I'm polling, what was it like kind of taking on Yoi Mia's character? I mean, I love your performance from what I've played so far, like the, in the story quest, like you sound awesome. But what did you, what did you specifically add to her, do you think, to really kind of like <laughs> bring out that bubbliness that she, that she kind of has and, you know. That firework, <laughs> I don't know what the term is for it, like that fire, I don't want to say like fiery personality, but it's just like a very, I don't know. I I think of her as effer, I, like the word that like I always kind of like associate her with like is effervescent, kind of like she's like, you, she's a bottle of soda that you, like, you shuck her up, like shook her up yes. a little bit and then she's always just bubbling over. <laughs> that's perfect. Which is ironic because like that's like water but she's a pyro user but that's like that's how i think it um that's if, a good like, analogy for a, yeah for a firework analogy it's more like a fountain where it is just like sparks constantly flowing out and so um but a lot of people have actually picked up on one of my references for uh her uh is that um there was a few there was like one uh character that i it was an unconscious decision that i kind of like uh influence my performance and a lot of people have picked up on it and that's pinkie pie from my little pony and so oh, yeah, pinkie, yeah. yeah pinkie pie uh it was an unconscious thing where i didn't realize that that's who i was kind of like being inspired by for some of my performance 
but like it's people started pointing it out. It's like, oh, she kind of sounds like Pinkie Pie. She kind of sounds like Pinkie Pie. And I'm like, oh, you know what? A little bit. Yeah. And it was like something I didn't even realize until after the fact people started pointing it out. And I'm like, oh, I totally did. Because like I like Pinkie Pie. <laughs> A little bit Jenny fact. I I really enjoy Friendship is Magic. I think it's a really cute show. And Pinkie Pie is my favorite. And I think she's the most like me. And I didn't even realize it was like an unconscious thing that like all of a sudden I was like, how oh, did I get yeah. those Aria like, guys? She is kind of based off of Pinkie Pie a little bit in my head. Like I, it was an accident, but it totally is. And so that I think that was like an unconscious thing that really helped me. But um, yeah. Also, she's just me and Yoi Mia are just also just very similar. Like I know that we just got off of like this very like serious discussion about the industry and the realities of it, but honestly, I think like I'm a, I'm pretty bubbly person. Like I'm usually like very excitable and like really just happy to be places. And um yeah, I'm just very very chatty. <laughs> and so <laughs> it came very naturally to me where like I saw the character and I saw Yoi Mia and just like there's a lot that I relate to her. Um, and so it was just, it came very easily. And so, um, something that, uh, so, uh something of my personality that I bring into Yoimiya is that she's been through a lot of, like, hard times. Like, she lives in Inazuma and, like, you know, the ride in Shogun. Like, it's hard living out there. And then she also has her, uh, dad who is, uh, hard of hearing and that sort of something. And she kind of, like, grew up alone a little bit. Um, but despite all those hardships, she still, like, she chooses to be optimistic. And she still sees, like, the beauty and everything. And she lives for those tiny moments of beauty. And I think I'm very similar in that way, too. Yeah. Where, like, life can be hard sometimes. But it really is just, like, it's just way more fun to like allow yourself to be excited about things yeah and so totally. i just relate i relate very very strongly to her and i think we have very similar personality types swifty storm and so, yeah just sort of thank you so much yoimi and just sort of like fit like a shoe fit like a glove however that saying goes i don't know clothing <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i just wear pajamas do you have a favorite line of yoimi's oh there's this is so it. many a gold <gasps> This is it, please! It? Is this what did I have the did I I can't remember if I had the Oh, I'm so glad I bought those fates. Save my life, save my bank account. Thank you. Please. Did it happen? Wait. I'm still going. Oh uh, yes! Yes! Yeah? Yes! We got yeah. your Mia! Thank you for wh whoever's over there. Mihoyo employee, thank you very much for flipping the switch. My Saving daughter. my bank account. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just gonna try to I was gonna be a nerd Jenny and ask you, like, can you say something in Yoimiya's voice for me? <laughs> uh what is my favorite line for Yoimiya? There's so many. Um so I love saying I love saying Goldfish of Doom. That's a blast to Goldfish say. Goldfish of Doom. <laughs> Goldfish of Doom. Um <laughs> uh I love that saying pew. Uh pew. fun fact yeah, uh pew 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 pew. I was so excited when uh we recorded her trailer and that was in there. Uh because that's so much fun to say. Just pew 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 just that's a blast to say. <laughs> that's awesome. Um uh I love screaming materials. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That has been an unexpected sleeper hit. I didn't, like, I was not expecting people to grasp so tightly onto that line, but it's really fun to see that people really enjoy that one. But yeah, I mean, I'll say it because I know that people really like it. Just not tear free yells. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, there's so many fun ones. Uh, I love her line about uh, her least favorite food. Because her least favorite food is uh, milk. <laughs> oh yeah, she's because she's lactose intolerant. Because <laughs> she says, "Yeah, milk never fails to set up fireworks in my stomach," and it's like, <laughs> and she says, "But the funny thing is, is that um, food made with milk doesn't affect me as much." And then she says that she guesses the little sealy in her stomach is just more picky than most. I'm just over here thinking. <laughs> Koi is watching the stream right now. He's like, yeah, relatable, relatable. <laughs> no, no, it's relatable for me, too, because, like, I was, like, oh, are that you? was one of the are... lines. Yeah, that was one of the lines where I, like, looked at, I was, like, I didn't look at Mihoyo. I was in a closet. But I was, like, wait, are you, 
are you kidding? And I'm like, and they're like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm lactose intolerant too. <laughs> and they're oh, like, no. wait, what? And like, you're, they're like, you're a lactose intolerant Japanese pyrotechnician. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, but yes. <laughs> like, I don't, like, Everyone I don't is know. their character. What is this madness? Like, I don't know who is spying on me to write this character, but it really is just like there's so many similarities between the two of us. It really is just absolutely buck wild. And just, let's see, I love that one. Um, let's see, I love there's this line where she's playing rock, paper, scissors with a uh, traveler, I think. That one's cute. I love her line about Klee. Because she just talks about like how cool she thinks Klee is, and Klee is my favorite character, <laughs> besides Noemiya. And so, like, I was so excited when I found out like she got to that I got to talk about Klee. Have you seen the um? Have you seen Klee's lines where uh, she's talking about like the people that she likes? I don't know if you've seen. No, that. I haven't seen and those yet. She's all like, uh, you know, like Jean is the best, and like she goes down like t through everybody like so and so's the best. Like, and then she gets the D Luke. And I can't remember what she says about D Luke, but it's like D Luke's one of the D Luke's one of the weird grown ups or something. <laughs> it's like it's, I love her. it's hilarious, yeah. And so yeah, like there's the uh, Yoi Mia says this line about Klee. She's like, I hear there's like this little kid in Mondstadt that like works with like plays with explosives. She must be like a genius. <laughs> And then, like, in my dream of dreams, this is not canon at all. This is not, like, secret knowledge. This is purely just Jenny Yokobori's, like, daydreams. Like, eventually, like, Klee gets to go to Inazuma and she just works. She gets, like, apprentice under, under Yoimiya. Like, that would be the, my cutest, like, daydream ever. Oh, I would that'd freak be super out. cute. Whereas she's like, Yoimiya. Because also, Yoimiya loves kids. Like, she's always hanging out with the kids around the village. Like, that's one of her things is that she's, like, a huge child at heart. And so she's always, like, playing with the kids and, like telling them stories and everything you see that in the um uh her story quest yeah and so yeah she just it'd be she would love clea i feel like they would be best friends it would be adorable <laughs> and then uh i also like the line about sayu too because uh she's like oh yeah i'm always worried about her like she's i really want to like take her to a festival and have her play with the other kids and i didn't know what sayu's opinion on yoimiya was and so when i was trimming with lily the other day lily started like just laughing and she's like that's so funny and i'm like why and she's like because sayu's line is how she's so annoyed with yoimiya about <laughs> constantly <laughs> trying to take her to a festival <laughs> So Yoimiya's like, oh, I really want to take her to a festival. I want her to play with the other kids. And Sayu's is like, I hate this. I, she, I, I'm so sick of her trying to take me to a festival. I just want to sleep. Why won't she leave me alone or something along those lines? And I had no idea. And so, like, I think that's so fitting that I was just, like, living in my little Yoimiya headspace. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, that's such a good idea, taking Sayu to play with the other kids. And Sayu's like, no, leave me alone. <laughs> I just want to sleep. Damn. That's so great. And here I am thinking like, oh yeah, I wish I had some lines. That'd be cool. <laughs> no, just, I know that's the that's the meme. I'm sure somebody's gonna get mad at me for like uh, continuously joking about this, but I just I you can't have help a line. Myself. It's windblade. Yeah, right. Windblade. <laughs> I I went to a convention recently, and I was uh, uh and so if. For everybody out there who doesn't know, I'm sure most of you do, we have like the signings like at conventions, we do the autograph signings, but um, <laughs> it was funny because uh, somebody brought me like uh, like Geo, Geo Ether, and I said, oh cool, like I said, yeah, you want me to write like Terra Smash on this? And the look on their face, <laughs> they were so confused. <laughs> They're like, Terra Smash? What the hell is a Terra Smash? I'm like, no, it's it's like I say it when, you know, with the Geo Traveler, like this is Geo, Geo Ether. They're like, he doesn't say that. I'm like, yes, he does. He says Terra Smash. And they're like, no, all he says is Windblade. I'm like, wait, are you memeing or? <laughs> I couldn't, still, I wasn't sure, but I ended up writing Windblade on their on their Geo Ether print. Um, yeah. <laughs> Like, that's all he... I, I don't know if that was a thing. I met a lot of people. By the way, guys, if if you're ever at a convention and you watch the streams, please tell me you watch the streams because I don't know if you're just, like, 
if you're meeting me just because you're you're going to that convention or you know me from another role but if you know me like as ether from genshin and i can't always tell and everybody's in different cosplays like i swear i met i met the same person three times every day but it's impossible to remember people when they're dressed up <laughs> in really different is. cosplays like you're dressed up as you're dressed up as kaya one day and then next thing you know you're cosplaying as 2b from near i'm like how am like, i that's the thing though it's like y'all are like the thing is is that y'all are too talented for us to remember like you guys are over here like master of disguising it up where you're just like sh like just well, I'm just like putting on a different face and you're sort of like, it's me again. And you're like, you look incredible. You look exactly like the character. I'm so sorry. Who are you? They're too good because They're I am too scared. Good. It's literally like the talent is too strong. Have you ever done a cosplay? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done one? Oh boy. I did like a really weak sauce cosplay back in high school because one of my favorite games of all time is the Portal uh, Portal series. So Portal 1 and Portal 2. And so the only cosplay I've ever gotten to do was um, I cosplayed Shell from the Portal games. And so I had like my Aperture tank top and I had my jumpsuit and I had like my Portal gun and everything. And I only say it's lame because like, just because I see like everyone with like these like absolutely incredible cosplays where like they make their face into an entirely different face with just like some bronze or like it's some witchcraft, honestly. It's so impressive. And I have so much respect for cosplayers like Honestly, like cosplayers, you guys are so amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you completely like change the anatomy of your entire like bone structure. And I was just sort of like, put on a tank top and a jumpsuit and like, here I am, world. <laughs> I'm ready to have fun. I am. I everybody's told me they're like, yeah, just have fun. Just have fun with cosplay. And I'm like, yeah, I really want to have fun with it. But also, like, I also don't want my cosplay to suck either. So <laughs> well, um, like, like, I'm such a perfectionist that like the idea of cosplay is so intimidating to me. I'm like, no, because it has to be perfect. Yeah. You know? And the cosplay community is so sweet. And they're like, no, it's just it's just about like having fun and enjoying yourself. And I'm like, that part of my brain is just like, no, it has to be perfect. Yeah, no, that's me. That's me with the with the ether cosplay when it happens. So I know we got that goal on the stream. I am very nervous. And like whenever whenever we hit that goal. So I, so I have like a member goal. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Twitch subs, like when you get yeah, a certain yeah. amount of like subscriptions or whatever. Um, that, and I said that I will cosplay ether. I am very worried about when that happens and when I kind of start getting into that because um, <laughs> all I know is, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure for the most part, everyone's going to be nice, but I know that if my cosplay sucks, the internet will never let me live it down. <laughs> the internet is going to hold on to it. Right, forever, like 10 years. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I can just imagine it already, like. I know. Just watching I'm it when I'm like, I'm like, I'll be 40 years old looking back, like, have, oh yeah, remember when kids. I did that? <laughs> yeah, I remember when I did that cosplay, and it's like a horrible, like, the horrible meme picture <laughs> of my cosplay. Wig. Yes, yes. It's like I need to go to a cosplay for. I know, I think there's some streamers out there. I need to go to a cosplay uh, professional that that Ask like. Emmy Lowe, because Emmy Lowe is an amazing cosplayer. She's one of those Lowe. that like. Yeah, Emmy's an amazing cosplayer. Like she's posted pictures of her cosplay where I'm like, I cannot be you. you wow. Who whose face is that? And she's like, that's my face. I just put some makeup on him. Like, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> you're beautiful no matter what, but that that's just an anime picture. And she's like, No, that's me. I'm a real human being. I'm like, <laughs> that's me. I'm about a real that, human Emmy. Being. <laughs> no, I made a flesh and bone. And I'm like, that's a drawing. You can't trick me. Oh. You talented, beautiful creature, Emmy Lowe. Yeah, it's just so complicated. I mean, there's so much. There's so many things to think about with with cosplay, and I, I met. It's it's weird though because I met a lot of great ethers at this last con. I went to I went to Otakon. Um, this last con I was at in uh in DC, and a lot of them I, I would ask every single person I'm like did you make your cosplay like how did you do it and some people they did make their cosplay I'm like from scratch and they said yep everything from scratch like I 3d printed this and I I, I, I sewed this like how did you do that and then I met some people that got theirs like off of Amazon and even then the Amazon ones looked really good I'm like for some reason I feel like this looks way better on you than it's gonna look on me <laughs> if I, I like, like go that route 
I am going to start streaming some more again on my Twitch, and I'm going to have a sub goal for me to cosplay Yoimiya, and I'm so, I'm nervous as hell. Cause oh my god, also, do I'm kinda it. Like, I'm kind of like, first, am I going to even reach that sub goal? Like, are people going to subscribe to me for you, me to reach No, it? you'll be surprised. Be make it high, because <laughs> it'll happen, like, really fast. I know, because I was talking about it on stream the other night, and I was, like, with Lily, and I was like, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. It might be, like, 300. And she's like, 300? I'll, I'll buy 300 subs for you right now. And I'm like, Lily, no! <laughs> Lily, please! <laughs> That's great. I don't know what I'm going to do the day when I meet someone cosplay as Yoi Mia, because, like, um... And Yatko just post. She posted a picture of a Yoimi a cosplayer cosplayer that she met at Otakon. and oh, I straight I met up, them too. I, yeah, I straight up. I was sitting next to my boyfriend when I saw that uh, thing pop up on my Twitter, and I clicked on it, and I almost started crying, like legitimately. Like I started like tearing up, and he thought something was wrong, and I'm like, no, this is just so amazing that, um, that it's just it's so incredible, like, and so yeah, it's just I straight up almost started crying because oh i was God. just like so i was so honored that someone was cosplaying oh, a character no. that i play and that like i had even like some small part in creating something that means so much to someone oh that's that's amazing uh you're gonna love it when when you when you're able to do cons and stuff and and you know oh my gosh it's it's incredible you'll meet people that are gonna come up to you and say hey like i specifically put this cosplay together for this specific con because i knew you were gonna be here <laughs> it's gonna be tough gonna be to not cry on the wreck. spot i'm gonna be such a wreck <laughs> i am such a cry baby i am the world's biggest cry baby i really am like one of the here's an embarrassing story about me is that one time i went to go see a movie in theaters back when things were not the way they are i went to go see a movie in theaters i forget what it was but the trailer for christopher robin played and i cried at the trailer to christopher robin in the movie theater and i was like this wasn't even like when i was like a teenager i was a whole ass adult just a whole ass adult and i was sitting there just like so all of a sudden I started like crying into my popcorn and people were looking at me and I was just sort of like, I just have so many emotions. And so I know I'm going to be a wreck at a con when I meet people and like I start meeting all like these wonderful Yoimiya fans and everything. I'm just going to be a disaster. Totally, totally. It's I, I guess I guess it's something you kind of like you never truly you never truly get over it Um, when people talk to me about that and they're like oh yeah like i i specific i'm like cosplaying this because like you were here and i i solely came to this convention just to meet you and i swear i'm like i look i look at them i'm like are you sure <laughs> like i'm so awkward about it but i'm really i'm really honored but i'm like oh that's that's super cool like i i, I don't know why <laughs> like i almost want to say that but i'm not trying to like <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, i i i the thing that like here's the thing that I'm worried about is when I start going to conventions because uh from like going to conventions before I started really kind of like uh booking roles and everything just being there for friends and everything as moral support I would always see people like walk up to them and be like hey is it okay if I take a picture with you and the thing that I'm worried about is that it's gonna be the opposite way around and I'm just gonna be a train wreck because I'm going to see a Yoimiya cosplayer across the convention floor and I'm gonna like hop over my table and just like Naruto run across and be like can I take a picture with you and just gonna be like oh my god who are you and I'm like everybody said I want to take a picture of you real bad yeah oh I know at the at the next con I go to um I need to take more pictures that was my one regret is i didn't i was taking pictures with everyone i mean my schedule was no joke like it was nuts um <laughs> and i wish i took like more pictures with people i need to not be awkward too. just like walk up hey can i take a picture with you and i don't know i walked oh. through uh, like people were giving me gifts too people will give you gifts like artists That's artists so and stuff sweet. Like the like artist alley and i'm like i didn't even get a chance to thank everyone like it's it's nuts people waited in my line to give me gifts from the artists and then i went oh and saw gosh. i went and said hi to one artist too um in particular but i didn't realize that some somebody in my line had also like given me a gift like one of their prints from oh. their shop and then the, and so when i went and visited them they gave me another gift and they never said they never said like oh did you receive my gift like <laughs> they never said that and so i didn't know so i was like oh this is so nice so they gave me like two or three things and i had no idea and i'm like 
Uh, why? You don't have to give me anything. <laughs> you know, like, I've already had some very, very sweet artists on Twitter reach out to me and be like, Hey, like, I made this Yoimiya a thing. Like, can I send it to you? Like, I want to gift it to you. And I'm like, no, let me give you my money. <laughs> let me give you my money. Let me give you my money. Because, like, I, art, art is so hard. Art's real hard. And, it, like, they work so hard at it. And they make these amazing pieces. And they're beautiful and incredible. Yeah. And then they go through the whole, like, fabrication, like, process. And, like, getting samples back. And it's, like, so labor intensive. And I'm like, no, I'm, like, begging you to take my money from me. Like, you worked so hard. Let me give you my money. Even just and the like, creativity it takes to draw. There's a reason why I can I only draw stick figures. There is a reason. <laughs> I know, like, it's just, like, so much dedication and heart that goes into it. And I'm just, like, I don't know, like, the little, like, raccoon gremlin in me. It's, like, whenever someone, like, wants to, like, give me one something that they, like, worked so hard on, I want to, like, sneak into their house through a window and just, like, <laughs> like with, like, a wad of dollar bills and just, like, <laughs> shove it in their wallet when they're sleeping and then just, like, climb back out. <laughs> Put it under, put, uh, be like the tooth fairy, you know, like put it under their pillow or something. Exactly. Like I'm just like, just full on, just like gremlin raccooning into their apartment. And Whisper just, in like, their ear, thank you, as you slip the wad of cash underneath their pillow. No, just like, just like, not even like whisper, just like grab by the shoulders and be like, you deserve compensation. You're a beautiful star sprite and you deserve money for your hard work. I know there's so many artists out there that I, I feel like they, they heavily, they heavily undercharge, like exactly. heavily. I'm like, I just want to like grab them, like, stop it. Your creativity is a miracle. You deserve my money. Let me give you my money. What am I going to spend it on food? I don't need food. <laughs> Utilities. No, let me pay you for your dope ass art. This will bring me happiness, so you yes. deserve to be paid. <laughs> you, got, you gave me the good brain chemicals. My serotonin's going nuts. Take this wad of bills that I found. I'm just going to start carrying around just like wads of cash. I'm just going to like chuck them at people and then run away really fast. <laughs> If they're like, oh yeah, no, like I came all the way from like Nebraska and I brought you this gift. I worked like 20 hours on it and I want to give it to you. I'm just going to like throw like a hundred dollar bill at their face and just like run as fast as I can. I will tell you the, like my favorite thing is getting like drawings from people. And I, I and it doesn't even matter. I'm not like, I, I don't, I don't even care if it's some, you know, crazy, like high, I, some crazy like i don't know they spent like tons of time on on the drawing like some people even just draw stuff for me while waiting in in the line and i, I don't know why that that'll just always be just like such such an amazing thing to me I, I i'm not i don't know why exactly that is it's like you're taking time to like draw me something it's like a personal gift it's something that it can't really be is. replicated like, by like just, i can't go really to the store and just come from it. the heart like it's yeah. amazing that was my uh, favorite thing to do when I was a kid, actually. And like, it's funny, like being on the other side of it, because when I was a kid, I would whenever my parents like took me to Disneyland or something, I remember in the car ride over because I grew up in Vegas. And so we were driving there and the entire time I was like, this is the Japanese in me, because I was thinking like so hard about Omiyagi, <laughs> Omiyage. And I was just sort of like, we're going to their house. We're going to Toontown. That's where they live. And I'm showing up without a gift for them. This is so rude. <laughs> and so I had my little notepad in the back of the car, little baby Jenny. And I was just like furiously drawing pictures of them. So I could when I walked up to that and I like met the characters, because in my brain, it was like still like the kind of like hazy, like separation of reality and fiction. Yeah. And so I was like just furiously drawing in the backseat of my parents' car being like, I can't show up empty handed. That's so rude. I'm going to their house. And so <laughs> I was like drawing these pictures of all the characters. And when I walked up to them, I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is all I had for you. And I would like give them like this little like drawing of whatever character they are in the park. So I like give Mickey a Mickey drawing and so on and so forth. And I would be like walking around the parks and I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. That's all I had. How rude. <laughs> and now I'm like, no, baby Jenny, that was a good thing. That means so much. Because, yeah, like whenever I get any drawing from anyone, because, yeah, people will, like tag me on Twitter where they'll like it because like I kind of like have like the little like eyes looking emoji because it will definitely look like they're like in school and they took it. They drew it like in the middle of class and they took a picture and tweeted it real quick. And I'm like, that means so much. Like you, someone could walk up to me and be like, hey, here's the Tesla I bought you. And I would be way more touched and impressed by like the hand drawn thing than like 
the Tesla any day. Like I would rather have something from the heart because that just means so much. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, or you could get something hand drawn. They could buy you the Tesla and then draw something on it. And then that would mean even <laughs> more. Uh, if anybody out there wants to do that, uh, here is uh, Jenny's address. You guys can please go ahead and uh, head on over there. Uh, <laughs> no, I totally get what you're saying, though. And I feel the same way. It's I think for me, it's hard to I don't know. Sometimes when it comes to stuff like that, it's hard for me to articulate it well or really put my thoughts into into words but i truly am grateful for every single thing that i uh that i receive like that like a very personal gift because i've thought i i thought about that too just like as as a kid i'm like yeah this is something that that can't be replicated i don't know why that that was a huge thing for me growing up but whenever i'm like yeah there's there's only one of this in the world that was just that was always just such a big deal to me i don't know why whether it was <laughs> This is so wholesome, but it just reminds me of the John Mulaney bit where the guy steals like this old where the, it's like a party and the guy steals like this like framed photo of someone's grandmother. And he's like, why the hell did you steal that? And he's like, because that's the one thing they can't replace. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just picturing like tiny baby Zach being like, hey, Zach, what's your favorite present? And we're like, I like this one. It's like this cute little hand drawn thing. And everyone's like, oh, that's so sweet. And you're like, because no one else in the world. Has yeah it. no it, it only right. zach yeah it wasn't it wasn't it didn't come from a wholesome place it was like no i only want it just me mine yes it's mine just like team rocket mentality it's like <laughs> i am the only one and then the teacher would ask me zach do you have any brothers or sisters or you know like do you have any siblings or whatever and i would say no I'm i don't only one yeah i'm like i it's just me i'm I an only i'm an only child and i like it that way so oh i i'm an only child because i've allowed it to be this way i don't want to share my toys i don't want to share anything it's zacky time <laughs> yeah i always thought about that too but i i do I, I do wish I had, I do wish I had like a, a sibling or, or somebody just, I think now that I'm older, I, I mean, I never not Sarah wanted Miller one. Cruz has, Sarah Miller Cruz has exited the chat. <laughs> Sarah, I was like, oh, Sarah enters the chat. Exactly. <laughs> was, She's sort hey. of like, and I thought we were twins. Wow. I'm going to kill you extra hard in Among Us. <laughs> I'm right here. I know Sarah's so cool. She's really nice. She, she's told me multiple times she's like you remind me of my brother I'm like how so oh. she's like i don't know why you're just it the... i kill him in among us too <laughs> i kill him in among us i know she's been practicing like with her actual her actual twin she's like oh yeah you know i kill him the same way mm -hmm. i just picture like in sarah's house like she has her sweet little dog and she has her little voiceover booth and then she also has like a dartboard with your face on it <laughs> <laughs> right next to her actual brother she's like yeah yeah same thing i do a wheel then she just like th like throws it behind her back and hits bullseye so you're like oh no sarah please oh, sarah, that's great. please leave them be <laughs> she's like the sweetest human being she has this like big happy smile and she's sort of like yeah i'm a killing machine it's fine <laughs> that sounds like such a sarah thing <laughs> she's dangerous i don't know she's dangerous i can't tell i can't tell when she's lying or telling the truth because she's the kind of person that will just laugh like ha, 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 and then like kill you and probably laugh even harder <laughs> like no it, like it's it's her it's sophia the uh vtuber that we play and that play with and then uh Bo bridgeland all three of those <laughs> <laughs> if they Scary. combined their forces, they'd be unstoppable. I, they would strike they, those three. It's like strike fear into my heart. <laughs> it's like that. This is a reference. I'm not sure many people are going to get. I hope they do. It's like um, uh, those old TF2 shorts where it's like meet the pyro, which haha <laughs> pyro. But yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I am not scared of anything, but that guy, he strikes fear into my heart. <laughs> She's like, I'm not scared of much, but Sarah Bill Cruz, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Bo Bridgeland keeps me awake at night. So scared. So wholesome. <laughs> he keeps me awake at night. <laughs> oh, when I, I hear love Bo. Oh my when God. I hear Tea Kettle whistle, I know he is near. 
now. <laughs> Friends are forever. I you never feel safe. <laughs> One time I saw Bo Bridgeland emerge from a box of English breakfast tea, and I haven't been the same since. Oh no, Bo. Oh my gosh. We uh, we also do have some interesting stuff. Uh, if you want to touch on these really quick. Dreaming Witch says, Hi, Zach and Jenny. Uh, Dreaming Witch says, Thank you so much for casting Zach in Rainbow High. Hey! I do. It's so funny because the last con I went to, I actually, I think I signed like at least three, if not more, River Dolls. No I, kidding! Yeah, people brought them to me. Isn't that nuts? I'm like, that you... That makes me so happy. I'm like, how do you know this? And they're like, oh, yeah. Like, I I just, I watched every single episode and everything. I'm like, oh, my God. Ah, that makes me so happy. Oh, man. I want to meet Rainbow High fans so bad. If anyone brings me a Jade doll to sign at convention, I'll freak out. I'll be so happy. Because, like, Rainbow High, I pour my heart and soul into too yeah i'm so <laughs> glad that we have you on rainbow high you're a great river oh thank you yeah no it's always great working with you like i don't know i always have a fun time especially mm -hmm. i just because i do a lot of anime and games so it's it's nice to do something different and kind of get to do my own thing with it <laughs> It's so much fun because, like, whenever I direct Zach in Rainbow High, it's always I'm like, no, Zach, dreamier, dreamier, <laughs> be more of a teen heartthrob. <laughs> Zach, more Efron. I'm like, sorry, I'm just a nerd. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll like be like right off of like recording some anime where like everyone in your family died and you have to get revenge or something, and I'm like, Zach, gotta kill now, them all. Well, <laughs> and, and it's you'll the wrong be show. Like, <laughs> exactly and i'm like no zach flirtier flirtier you're like huh? <laughs> what i'm like i've never done this before <laughs> not in acting or in real life <laughs> <Help. Ow. laughs> yeah. I'm just like zach you're a teen heartthrob <laughs> zach more teen heartthrob and you're like i don't know how <laughs> jenny <laughs> that is it that is exactly what happens. <laughs> That's what it's like in the Rainbow High sessions with me and Zach. It's just me screaming more hard throb and him being like, ah! Just confused <laughs> screaming. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Jenny, are you in the show called, um, where is it? Hold on. I just, I think it was called Akudama Drive. Akudama Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Where is this? Uh, so sorry, guys. I missed so many, so many chats, like usual. Uh, <laughs> sorry. He was having dark flashbacks to me making him be a teen <laughs> And he blacked out for a little I... bit. <laughs> um, what is this? Where, where is this? Where is this? Ah, where, where did it go? No. Why Hold on. I'm going to look for this until I see it again. Someone said something really. Oh, here it is. Um, uh drill bit thank you for your super chat uh super chat they say hey zach hope you have good luck pulling yoimiya this was an hour ago i'm sorry oh, um uh, wanted to say jenny did a great job voicing pupil in akudama drive <gasps> yeah that's she, my girl she was amazing in the role oh thank you <laughs> I love Pupil so much. I loved being in Akudama Drive. That was, I think, one of my first anime roles because I was trying so hard for so long to start get my foot in the door with anime. And that was uh, the uh, Brittany and Matt over at Kocha Sound took a chance on me and I got to play an anime and it was so fun. I love Pupil. She goes through such a big emotional arc and I got to do so many kicks and so many just screams. It was, oh, I loved, I loved that part. I love that show. It's so good. If you haven't seen Akudama Drive, go watch it. It's such a good show. That's awesome. And Allison A says, uh, Yoimiya is wonderful. Thanks for doing such a great job, Jenny. So glad I managed to pull her. <gasps> Congratulations on pulling her. Yay. And so glad that you're able to get her. Yeah, thank thank you, thank you for liking you and me and pulling for her. I I love playing her. She was so much fun. Like every time I went in for a session for you and me, it was like I got to, it was like one of those things that me and Zach were talking about. Like it was just pure play and fun, and it was just 
sucks. Just every time I get to play her, it's just like, it's just sheer joy. And I, it's like, ah, oh God, I love her. I love her so much. And I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying her and she's bringing you guys joy. Yeah, everybody's super chill right now in the chat. Thank you guys. Thanks Yay. for being, thanks for being nice. Thank you to the people who weren't like screaming like Paul, Paul. <laughs> just want to say I appreciate you that uh, <laughs> that weren't doing that. Um, but yeah, no, this has been super fun, Jenny. Thank you so much. I'm hope I'm hoping we get more more times to play uh, play Among Us. I don't, are you playing this month? I am. Oh, okay, cool. So I put in I put in my thing on the uh, on the sign up sheet. So I should be playing again this or this month just because i had to skip last time due to the due to the con i was at even i know people were shook <laughs> were they people were <laughs> shook people in the chat were just like where is zach and we're like we don't know we're so scared <laughs> oh, we no, don't know I'm what to sorry. do without him oh no i'm sorry i i don't know why they're so shook that's i didn't really the think that they would notice <laughs> shaken to their core that's crazy i thought i really didn't think i don't know i thought people would just be kind of like oh yeah whatever like he's doing something but uh, it's nice to know that i was missed somewhat but oh, also so no you were sorely missed <laughs> i'm excited did sarah play last like i didn't i didn't even see like your guys' stream i've been so so out of it was sarah playing I, too i think so and like i don't know who she was killing i think she might have just been like probably writing your name over and over again in a death note since you weren't there <laughs> but that's just an assumption that i'm working off of <laughs> that sounds like something she would do <laughs> as i I'm laugh like, and uh, uh -huh. prepare you for the worst a single tear rolls down your cheek and you're like <laughs> wind blade wind blade the sad my... wind blade that's one of my favorite moments from uh, any of the genshin or just uh, like voice actor among us streams is um when core decided that you were no longer their travel companion and just the sad wind blade that you let out <laughs> wind blade somebody made it oh speaking of artists like the animations and stuff people make i love them so so much it's yeah the animatic is cool. yeah, the, yeah yeah the animatic, animatic is that the one is, you're talking about because yeah, i saw yeah, yeah, that yeah, animatic and i laughed so terrible. hard yeah and then just like yeah just your sad wind blade, <laughs> wind, <laughs> wind blade. Wind blade. I mean, hey, I'm saying my, I'm saying my, uh, my line, you know, it's mm -hmm. not my fault that it sounds sad. It was just in the moment. It was just <laughs> emotional. It was yeah. just, that was the way the wind blew you at that moment. So many people ask me to say, it's funny because like wind blade has become such a thing now. Everyone, uh, like I said, everyone's asking me to write it on their prints, but it, it's, it's weird because it's like all I people think all I say is wind blade, but just different variations of it. You know, like this was your sad one. This is the one where you this was your beta voice wind blade where you screamed your head off. And this is your normal wind blade. This is your slightly angry wind blade. This you know what I mean? I'm sure, that's the only line you have in Rainbow High, too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that's all I've ever had you record for Rainbow High. So so. Is that Amaya's like, oh, we got to get ready for the fashion show. And you're just sort of like Windblade. Windblade. Like, yeah, Windblade. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you say, Ripper Kendall. Somebody asked me to do that. I don't know if anyone filmed it or not, but I was doing a Fire Emblem panel at, at uh, Otakon, the last con I was at. And somebody, so everybody kind of like lines up in front of the microphone to ask us questions. And mm -hmm. someone asked just randomly, we're, we're only talking about Fire Emblem stuff on this entire panel. And someone's like, yeah, like Zach, I really love what you did for Byleth. By the way, can you like can you scream Windblade for me? <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like everybody else there, like on the panel, because we had like Joe Zija, we had um, we had Abby, Abby Trot, Trot Laura Pose. Uh, who else? Uh, was I it just? Them. I think it was just us. I, my, was it just us four? Uh, I hope I'm not leaving anybody else. But anyways, we we were doing that panel, and I just. I, and I just screamed Windblade into the microphone. It was really loud, like a lot louder than I thought it would be. And, um, and I think they were so confused that the crowd, half of them kind of cheered. And I think the other half were like, 
you know, holding their ears because of how loud it was. I just like the picture that you screamed Windblade and all of a sudden you just hear like the stomping down the stairs and like the like the Hyatt and you just like all of a sudden like this like old woman like wearing her like slippers and her like curlers comes down just like pounding on the door. She's like, hey, keep it down. <laughs> and then she stomps all the way back up. <laughs> I've thought about it too. Just going to a convention, I oh, I'd have to film it though, so I wouldn't feel super weird about it. I I would still feel really weird about it, but I've thought about just going to like a convention hall, uh, going to the top because sometimes we get like those the VIP like the VIP rooms and VIP access ways to get through the convention easier. And I'm just gonna go to the very top of like a convention and scream Windblade out to everybody. And... That's what you have to do when you go paragliding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. If that happens, I'm, just... I'm terrified of I'm heights. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> like I just I just love the fact that someone did that on a fire emblem panel and then also like I just really like the idea that this just happens to you in your everyday life or that you're at the, like the grocery store and they're like okay yeah thanks so your toll's gonna be uh 58 64 and uh can you scream windblade for me <laughs> yeah yeah and you're, at the, you're at the doctor and they're like okay yeah so it looks like a routine checkup um so yeah it looks like you just like scraped your knee real bad how about windblade windblade real quick <laughs> I'm like I didn't even know that you that you knew this oh i feel like oh i feel like i've i swear i had a i swear i hadn't had an experience recently where was this i hope it was like at like the mechanic it's like oh yeah no uh your car is completely totaled uh really sorry about this it's gonna cost thousands of dollars how I about a wind blade <laughs> i don't know why i can't remember but i swear i had an experience where somebody recently where somebody said that they watched my streams or something where was this? Why can't I not remember? The last week has been such a daze for me, but maybe I'll, if I can remember what happened, I'll, I'll tell it later. That's weird. Why can't I remember this? I know that this happened, but was it just, just a dream? You. I don't know, man. <laughs> but now I'm like, I just, I just made myself giggle with the idea of you like, you're getting married. It's the happiest day of your life. You're staying at the altar. Be like, okay. And uh, you may now uh, say Windblade. <laughs> just once. <laughs> It's for my cousin. Big engine fan. Just into my phone real quick. Yeah, it's just like Please? yeah. I, I just hear I do, and then and then I'm like, and then I come back with a wind blade. <laughs> no, I just I just like not even that. I just picture like Koi for some reason like kicking through the door just in the back. I'm just like say wind blade. <laughs> say wind blade. I thought you were saying Koi is like halt. Halt the wedding! <laughs> <Is he kidding? laughs> it's both. It's both. It's like, and if anyone has any objections, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Koi I do. The, Koi <laughs> kicks through the door, his hair whipping in the wind, and they're just sort of like, oh, it's Koi, and he's just sort of like, I have something to say, and everyone's like, <gasps> and he's like, can you say Windblade real quick? <laughs> real quick for me, one one more time. We just what one one time for my TikTok real quick. <laughs> <laughs> for my TikTok. For my TikTok yeah. real quick. He'll be he'll be on the total influencer side of things back like when that time comes, he'll have a full DSLR camera and everything. Like he's, he's gonna, gonna have an thing. industry yeah. pass to your <laughs> wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have we'll give out special badges and you know, we'll chart the business side of the business side of uh of the industry. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll talk to some other voice actors. We'll charge like VIP we'll we'll have like the VIP badges, we'll have the the standard badges and What's going on, you guys? It's me live streaming from Zach Aguilar's wedding. Don't forget to smash that bell. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, speaking of like, <laughs> speaking of smashing the like button, please uh, click the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Tell me who is your favorite Genshin Impact character? What are you looking forward to in Inazuma? By the way, uh, click the bell notification so you are notified for when these streams go live because I don't know if it always pushes it out there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Make sure you do that. Yes, we got Yoimiya today. I'm super happy. I'm super happy Jenny was able to come on here. We got Yoimiya because Jenny came here on the stream. We got super lucky, everybody. Can you believe that? I did not have to spend any more money than I wanted to. Hallelujah. Comment Thank you to the person at MiHoYo for flipping the switch. Comment down below where you would interrupt Zach Aguilar in his, regu <laughs> in his regular everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, love, uh, I love going on a tangent. Oh my gosh. Uh, gosh. Gosh. Uh, uh, Angelo, thank you so much. You're a, uh, you're a geeky soldier in the army, and I seriously love your advice about being a voice actor. Because honestly, Aww. it's the kind of advice that works for a lot of jobs. Here's some money for your gotcha fund. Angelo, thank you so, so Aww, much. Oh, yay. Thank Thanks, you. Angelo. Oh, my goodness. 
That was fifty dollars. That's so nice. <laughs> Angelo, That's so generous. thank you. That is super generous. Holy crap. Thank Man, you. Man, people rule. People are so cool. Thank you, Angelo. Look at that. You stay safe That's, out there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Guys, okay. I'm yeah. Oh, and I it's so funny before we went into that whole YouTube bit. I I actually wasn't going to say that at all. I was going to say guys, make sure you go follow Jenny Yokobori on Twitter, <laughs> which by the way is linked down below in the description and also uh in the chat. So guys, please please go follow Jenny. And so Jenny, you said that you stream, right? Or you you have streamed or I have a stream. I'm going to get back into it real soon, real soon. Cause I moved into my new place. Uh, I'm finding like a little bit of stability amongst all the chaos. Yeah. And so I'm going to start streaming again soon. Yeah. Uh, twitch.tv slash Jenny Okabori VO. Ooh. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to add that in people guys go follow Jenny on Twitch and also on Twitter too. Um, please, because we are going to be streaming more together yeah. i'm sure i'm yeah. sure we'll find other things to play too i have some fun ideas in my head i have not been able to i've i've run some by christian and i just have not been able to execute anything because my schedule is like you look at it and you will you will cry but i'm so happy but i'm also not but i'm also you know I what i mean you. I <laughs> I'm like, I'm just being real. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, when you're, when you're super busy, it's not, uh, it's not sunshine and rainbows, but it's just like, it's, you take a look at your schedule and it's just like, <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, I just want to play video games. Like I just want to, I just want to stream and have fun with, uh, with people. So, um, yeah, like the, my schedule's in, yeah, I, I relate very heavily. My schedule is usually very like packed and like hectic and whatnot. And then, um, it occurred to me the other day when I was streaming with Christian and Lily, when I got to pull you and me and I was hearing her around, it was like so surreal for me to hear my voice and I couldn't understand why. And then it occurred to me, this is the first time I ever heard my voice in a video game because I've never gotten a chance to play any of the other video games that I'm in. And yeah. so it was kind of like, I was having this very surreal, like out of body experience. Like, wait, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. It's super, it's super surreal. It's still weird to me, like hearing myself and, uh and smash and whatnot too like you i would have those times like i'd go over to my friend's house and like oh yeah we're all playing smash you want to play smash with us like oh yeah wait i'm in this <laughs> I'm, never, <laughs> like, I'm literally never gonna stop congratulating you about that that's so freaking cool <laughs> join me for smash everybody Woo! No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll happen like you you have no idea i never thought it was gonna happen for me everybody people will have joked with me about like oh yeah as soon as genshin comes to switch like your character is going to be in smash i if that if that happens that would rule I, so hard i don't know what i'll do but i'll if you're like double dipping in smash that would be incredible i i have no idea what i would do i would probably yeah i i'll have to think of something you do a crazy little, you do a little dance you do a little do a little dance i'll do a little dance which i am I'll horrible do a little at dance. <laughs> oh my goodness um what else was i gonna say uh i think i think wind that's blade. it yeah wind blade the only <laughs> thing to say that's the only thing you ever say <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> when I especially when I, I ran playing. into yeah ran into the stu ran into you at the studio the other day and I was like hey Zach and you're like Windblade and I was like ah man that guy never can never leave it at, all, in the studio that's all he says that's, that's it. all he says <laughs> he hasn't been the same since Genshin started <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right uh Jenny if there's anything else you would like to add to the stream guys once again make sure to go follow Jenny down all all the links and stuff are down below but uh, thank you so much. Holy crap, Brandon. Whoa, Jesus. That what was, happened? That was a hundred dollar donation. Whoa. <laughs> Brandon. Hot diggity. Uh, hey, Zach and Jenny, just want to say thanks for being a part of this amazing game. I really look forward to seeing what's to come in the future, and I hope you do too. Brandon, thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Hot diggity dog. Thank you so much. Thank you for contributing to my gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh to my uh perfectly healthy uh i mean um <laughs> perfectly healthy not to, an issue to my uh my polling i really do appreciate that holy crap that 
That's so, so nice. Oh, before, That's so nice. before I do go too, though, Jenny, I don't know how much time you got or if you got to bounce. Um, that's totally cool. I got a cool. second. Yeah, uh, I got a second. I'm going to deafen real quick, and I'm just going to, like, give a proper goodbye, and then I'm going to end the stream, and then I'll, I, I want to come back and just say, like, you know, bye, hi, bye, you know, all that stuff afterwards. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll be right Also, back. yeah, if anyone wants to join me, a print, they're for sale on my shop. <laughs> What's your shop? JennyOkabori.com slash shop. <laughs> Is that also just linked on? I have your normal website down below. Yes, is that? It's, yeah, it's part of my site. Oh, okay, guys. So if you want to join me a print, you can go to jennyyokobori.com and then click the shop tab, and that will take you to the shop, and you'll be able to get a join me a print. I'm just seeing this now. I'll, I see all. Oh, wow. This print is super cute. Mm -hmm. I love the colors. I know. It came out. Uh, that's Akuo on Twitter. A K U O. Oh, nice. He is like the king of magical girls he he has the sweetest art that's amazing oh my gosh oh your akadama drive character oh wow yeah. this is cool too is this the same artist oh no uh that is a uh, artist named uh, pi on twitter that's p-a-i oh, they, nice. they have like i don't know what their pronouns are off the top of my head but their art is so striking like their use of colors and just like their like line work is just incredible like i'll i'll link you their twitter i'll dm you their twitter because like oh their yeah beautiful. please do okay guys all right i'm gonna wrap it up uh jenny i'm gonna deafen for a sec but i'll be right back i just want to say thanks to everybody watching the stream all right <laughs> guys thank you all so so much for coming uh, I really appreciate it. Sorry, the stream was a little, uh, <laughs> my, my mind has been all over the place this past week. Um, I don't know if you know this, but my plane got stuck. I was stuck in an airport for, for a night because my, my flight, uh, I was in, I was in DC and I was trying to come back to California and my plane was on the runway trying to take off and there was something like, I don't know wrong with my plane we weren't able to take off on the runway so uh basically my my flight got canceled back to california got stuck in an airport i came back on monday and i had to work all day and it's just been non-stop like every single day i have uh i have like 9 a.m sessions and i work all day every day and then i do auditions like super late at night so it's been it's been crazy um crazy for me and i'm getting ready to go to more conventions but to those of you i met at otakon it was really a pleasure meeting you thank you so much for coming out to see me um i i will not be able to read all these super chats but i do want to shout out everybody who everybody who who donated today i really do appreciate you guys i'm so sorry i'm just like I'm, it's it's nuts right now in my head um uh kainan mike song nolly uh Ni Naomi, uh, oh, I'm so glad that I'm glad you're feeling better, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Or I hope you're feeling better. You just recovered from COVID. Oh my goodness. Uh, Toasty Soul Dark, May May, James A, uh, Lena Love, uh, Mia, Violet, uh, Shauna. Welcome to the Air Buds. Alistair, thank you. Dreaming Witch, oh yeah, thank you. Owen Holmes, welcome to the Earbuds. Drillbit, thank you again for your, uh, thank you, Ben, again for your kind words. Alfred, Emma, M. Rousey's, Leo the Fish, a Swifty Storm. I'm so glad I got you, Mia. <laughs> I think we, we kind of knew it was going to happen. I'll, I'll, uh, Alter Rixer, I think I'm saying your name right. Uh, Hobie. Uh, Haley, welcome to the Airbuds. Brenna, thank you. Kyo Beans, just wanted to say hi. Hi, thanks, Kyo Beans. Uh, Cynthia, welcome. Uh, 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 Stager, Stager, I think. Uh, welcome to the Airbuds. Toasty Soul Dark, thank you again. Leo the Fish, oh my gosh, this is never ending. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Halcyon, uh, Fate. Um, are you going for the weapon too? Fate, uh, Hersher of Mods. No, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna go for the weapon. I'm not sure. Maybe if I do, I might do it off stream. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe. I haven't, th I haven't thought about that, actually. Zev, thank you. Uh, Sinizus, thank you. Allison A. 
Um, uh, Wolfie Tunes, Dreaming Witch again, Chicks, Jesse, uh, Wasabi. Yeah, oh, so nice to meet you at Animanga, by the way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Universal Studios Hall, former retail wizard from Harry Potter over here. Oh, very cool. Uh, was it me at Animanga? Oh, were you talking about when I met somebody? Uh, no, I, I I swear I met somebody else too, in like a just in a random place. I don't know where it was. It was at a store or something, but I can't I can't recall when it was because my brain hurts. Um, but yes, it was so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, like finally I my first the first Airbud I think I've met in person. Um, and thank you again for for like the cool Pokedex like journal thing. That was that's so that's so sweet. Angelo, thank you again. Chicks, Brandon, Kyo Beans, Naomi, Naomi Brunson, thank you, thank you again. And Brandon, thank you again for your, thank you so much for your very generous super chats, by the way, Windblade. Guys, I appreciate you all so much. It's been nuts. Everything's been happening in my life. I even considered buying a laptop to try to like stream on the go because I will be traveling to a million different conventions this year. So if you are going to a convention, uh, all I can say is make sure, like got, do everything you can, bring hand sanitizer, wear your mask, stay stay safe guys. Um, if you're going to a con, if I'm still going to all my cons, like I don't know 100% because I'm just kind of playing this whole thing by ear. But um, if you do, if everything is good or good enough for cons to be open and you come and see me and I'm going to a con, just stay safe out there, guys. Uh, I really love meeting all of you that I met at this last, the last two cons I went to. So, uh, yes, I hope to meet some of you there. And, uh, yeah, till next time, guys. I'll be back soon. Hopefully, I'll stream again, I promise. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming out. You all have a great rest of your day, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, where's my ending screen? <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this. It's only been like a week or something. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. I love you guys.